so I'm gonna go ahead and quick view what's inside the car. The car is really messy inside. It's it's been sitting for such a long time, and I haven't checked what it, what's inside in the back. And I can see some some cleaner here, some purple stuff cleaner, and I don't know what this is. Like some all this like brake fluids and stuff. Got the gasoline tank. That's pretty cool. I mean, actually, there's some oils right there, so I can actually look at the car and see what we find. Oh, they got some lug nuts here too as well. <laughs> came with lug nuts. I don't know, but hey, um, it's funny how it came with the GTR seat, so that's pretty damn cool. So I can't wait uh, to reupholstery them. Yeah, the dash are perfect condition. There's no cracks, no bubbly. Oh, there is some bubbly here, but that's not a big deal. No cracks. Windshield's cracked though. Ooh, this car is so dirty. Oh my god, it's crazy. I don't know what I'm expecting here, but I'm gonna need some gloves and. I don't have that much space. I'm actually using my iPhone right now, but I will try to video as much as I can for you guys. So here's what I got so far from the interior. Just what's inside the um, the skyline, and I still haven't figured out how to open this trunk. Yeah, so we don't know what to expect and what's inside the trunk actually. So, but um, good couple of good stuff I guess. We got some spacers here. I don't know what this ball is about, but got some lug nuts. Got some um hubs wheel studs and some tire puncture stuff tire tools and some some good tools in here so got some cleaning stuff here pb blasters brake fluid and some uh, antifreeze coolant gas tank thing and some oem skyline floor mats here and so we shall continue on Finally got the car in place where it's supposed to be. As you can see, I've already got out the 32. Found more common rust area as I was expecting. Clearly it is a rust bucket and I am planning to restore the heritage of this skyline. And in this episode, I'll be walking through with you guys and do some inspections and, and expecting the unexpected if that makes sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and start from the rear. As you can see, I've already removed the rear bumper, rear spats, and the side skirts as well. Now seeing closer on this side of this rear panel here, the rust is already eating up the fender seals. I mean, it doesn't even exist. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm gonna be doing some uh, metal body work on that and on this folding area will have to be cut and fabricated as soon as I gathered all the tools that I will need for this project I'm thinking most of the buildup rust are around this area that's why I made the marks using the tape so I can start doing some templates across this area and maybe just cut out this whole part of this quarter panel it sounds very easy by warding it, but it's a lot of work and time involved ahead of me. But hey guys, it's here right in front of me. It's a skyline, or I should say abandoned skyline. She's broken, wanting, and been waiting to be fixed someday. So I can't wait, and I am beyond excited to start making progress. A lot of metal fabricating and welding involved for this project. So I am hoping you are following my build content a zero to hero and I always appreciate you guys' support like my friends used to say to me Gambate ikimasho it means give it all or give it all you got and not to mention I am really interested on saving up for this aftermarket wide body kit from a little place in Fukuoka, Japan 
in Yukahashi called Garage Active, but I'm not sure yet, guys. I am geeking out right now. I just think this car is in a great contender for a new look with a wide body kit. Let me know what you guys think. Should I keep it stock or should I go wide? I am open to your suggests. Please let me know down in the comments. Going into the interior side, this is the first thing I got out. I took both of the front seats out, then on the rear seats as well. And the reason for it is to see what's underneath this 20 years old carpet. Surprisingly, the car didn't have any bad smells whatsoever, like rat poops or just anything living creatures inside this car. And seriously, that would be a nightmare or not so good. So lucky me, it still smells like the 90s. So the main purpose is for me to have the visual on the floor panel to see how much rust I am going to be dealing with. Now it seems very minimal around this area by the looks around the doorway. Somehow I need to know how to fix the bubbly on the dash. Otherwise, pretty much everything you see here is pretty basic. The digital climate is intact. It has Panasonic stereo. Let me know what you guys think about what I should get for the interior. I do want to start purchasing some old Nismo accessories for keepsake. As of now, the market is going really high. Surprisingly, the center console trim is in perfect shape as they are super expensive or just hard to find nowadays. So I finally figured out to how to open the trunk issue by removing the metal cover panel here with some 10 millimeter bolts. Um, I believe that that's a Cusco rear strut by the looks of it. But we'll get more into that soon. So by the looks of it, this car still have all the original parts intact. In fact, it's got some OEM upgrade options. For example, it came with GTR seats and a GTR spoiler. Also came with OEM Type M aerodynamics and the body seems pretty straight to me. Now going forward here to the brake system and suspensions, still got the original full Sumitomo's brakes, um, which I plan to rebuild sometime soon. Now I'm not sure if the shocks have been replaced or whatnot, but it looks aftermarket to me. The stock mount side intercooler is still intact. Now this one I haven't seen in a while and are getting rare and expensive these days. The OG HKS Honeycomb air filter shell. Super cool to have in in my opinion. And yes, the RB20 motor still runs perfectly although I should get it rebuilt or I might even get a cross with something better like an RB26 but they are very expensive these days so we don't know what the future holds for this one yet as far as I know the RB20 DTs are on the lower side of horsepower out of all the RB series but on the good side the RB20s can be reliable as it sits on 2.0 liters so the fuel economy is better so the car actually came with like the GTR seats, so front, uh, the front seats and the rear seats too as well. And pretty much just how they look like, uh, kind of folded up here. They're kind of beat, like not this one, this one's still in good shape. That's the uh, passenger and then the driver's side's kind of beat because he had that. But I, I plan to do a rear polster somehow and someday and find out, see how much it actually costs to do that, which I've never done before. Um, and here is... Uh, the rear seats right here are also GTR. I love these things because they're like so deep, like super cool. There's the the, the backrest, super awesome. Um, yeah, definitely got the work on that. Um, yeah, pretty much is what we're dealing with. The Skyline. 